God is saying to you today, as time is running out and your deadline approaches, the gravity of your situation becomes clear. Only two days remain until your time of crisis. The clock is ticking and you are running out of options. You have been warned, and yet you still hesitate. Do not make the mistake of ignoring this message, for it may be the last chance you have to receive help. The consequences of your inaction could be dire and irreversible. Like this deed if you believe in God. Think about the potential ramifications of disregarding this warning. Two days may seem like plenty of time, but in the grand scheme of things, it is merely a blink of an eye. How long have you been struggling? How much have you sacrificed? And now, in the face of this looming deadline, will you throw it all away? You may be feeling overwhelmed, scared, and uncertain. It is natural to want to avoid facing your problems head on. But by ignoring this message, you are only delaying the inevitable. The longer you wait, the harder it will be to find a solution. And with each passing moment, your stress and anxiety will only continue to increase. Type. I embrace my power to confirm. Do not let fear hold you back from taking action. Remember, you are not alone in this. There is help available, but it is up to you to reach out and take it. Do not let pride or stubbornness cloud your judgment. Your time of crisis is not something to be ashamed of. It is a part of life that we all go through at some point. So, I implore you, do not let these two days slip away without making a conscious effort to seek help. Take a deep breath, gather your thoughts, and make a plan. Whether it be seeking advice from a trusted friend or family member, reaching out to a professional, or simply taking some time to reflect and assess your options, do something. Do not let this message be your last opportunity for assistance. Type. I embrace my power to confirm. I understand that taking action can be daunting, but the alternative of doing nothing is far worse. Imagine looking back on this moment in the future, filled with regret for not heeding this warning. The time to act is now. The countdown has begun, and you must make a choice. Will you continue down the same path, or will you take a leap of faith and seek the help you need? Remember, only two days remain. Do not let them go to waste. Take control of your situation, and do not let it control you. You have the power to turn things around, but it all starts with a single step. Make the decision to ask for help, and you may be surprised at the positive impact it can have on your life. The choice is yours, but do not wait too long time is of the essence. Comment, Amen, if you believe. You belong to me and my spirit lives in you. My spirit is like a superpower for you. He's not magic. You simply have to let go and allow my spirit to guide you. When you are unsure, my spirit gives wisdom. When you struggle with fear and anxiety, my spirit ushers in peace and love. When you begin to drift and are tempted to follow your own way, my spirit will lead you into my will. You have nothing to fear because you have entrusted your life to me. My spirit will comfort you, intercede for you, and advocate for you. 
Dear Lord, help me love the life I live right now. Show me the good things I often overlook and help me be content with what I have. Forgive me when I compare myself to others. Forgive me for longing for things outside of you and your kingdom. Thank you for loving me right where I am, right as I am. Help me keep my eyes on you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Type 333. If you trust God, trust in God with all your heart, and don't try to figure out everything on your own. Today, make sure you're not wasting your time by trying to figure everything out. You don't need to understand God's plan to know that it will come to pass. You just have to have faith. Jesus didn't say all things are possible for those who understand. He says all things are possible to them who believe. So put your mind at ease by trusting in God, walking in faith, and by not trying to figure everything out. Be blessed and be encouraged. I know that I serve a God who is bigger than anything that I am facing today. No matter what happens or what the outcome will be, I know that He is in control and He has a plan for my life. A plan that will prosper me and not harm me. One that will give me a bright future. I don't know if that means that I am going to be healed, have my relationships restored, experience financial breakthrough, be married, or have children. However, I find so much peace in knowing that He is taking care of me and will always provide. I will never lack or be without as long as continue walking with Him. Type. I am ready to shine, to affirm. I have opened a door for you that no one can close. Today make sure you remember that your breakthrough is going to be better than anything you had to go through. Sometimes while in a difficult season it can be hard to be encouraged in what God is gonna do because you have the issues of the present time to deal with. But don't you allow the issues of the present to have dominion in your mind. The Bible tells us that for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. God has placed joy before you also. Keeping that vision alive in your mind will help you press through all the way into your breakthrough. Type 444 If you believe, I feel an urgency to remind someone that God is He one who opened the door for you, so walk through it. God is the one who created the opportunity for you, so take it. Stop overanalyzing your motives and step into the next phase of what Jesus is doing in your life. You've been second-guessing yourself and wondering if you really heard from God or made it up yourself. You'll never find out if you don't step out. It's not about whether you're good enough, gifted enough, educated enough, resourced enough or holy enough. It's actually got very little to do with your abilities and everything to do with what God wants to do in and through your life for His glory. The enemy has been reminding you of all your limitations, failures and mistakes, rendering you paralyzed. It's time to silence the accuser and listen to God. He called you, you didn't call yourself. He chose you, you didn't choose yourself. He appointed you, you didn't appoint yourself. It's time to obey God's leading. Comment, Amen, if you believe. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. God is a protector. 
He will hold your heart close to His and protect it all the days of your life. This can be a difficult thing to wrap your mind around, especially if you've been hurt by people close to you. So, how's your heart? Are there parts of your life that you don't want to open up about? Certain pains and heartaches that you're hoping God will just ignore? He is not a father who will ignore the issue, nor one who will open the wound without care, but one who wants to heal you. Let your walls down today and let him in. This is where true intimacy with the Lord begins and where you will learn more about him and the grace he so freely offers. Type 555 If you have faith in Lord Lord, it's so hard not to focus on money. Sitting here at all the kitchen table, I end up making myself sick with worry over these bills. It's never enough, Lord. What if something bad happens? What if I lose my job? What if the market crashes and we lose our retirement money? Our savings account would only last so long. Then what, Lord? Dear gracious God, forgive me for not trusting you. Please strengthen my faith and help me to remember that no matter what situation life finds me in, you will be there with me. Despite my misgivings I need not worry, for your will shall be done. Ask the Holy Spirit to begin to work in you from the inside out, to make you the man or woman God designed you to be. Ask God to help you know His will and give you the strength to do it. Spend some time thinking about the fact that God loves you. Contemplate that all Jesus did, He did for you, as an expression of that love. Reflect on the fact that God has a plan for your life that He wants to reveal to you. It will be the best life you could ever live. Tell him you want to do what he wants you to do. Embrace grace. It is a gift for you. Type, I love you God, to affirm. You are God's anointed. When people come against you, they're also coming against the God who put the blessing on you. The good news is, you don't have to fight those battles. Don't try to do it in your own strength. You have a defender. Stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord. The people and circumstances you're up against may seem bigger and more powerful, but stay in peace. The blessing on you is greater than what's trying to stop you. The scripture says that what God has blessed, no man can curse. The blessing on you is more powerful than any betrayal, than any negative words spoken over you, than people trying to discredit you. Nobody can take that blessing from you. That means you are blessed no matter what people or circumstances say. Here's the key. The blessing did not come from people, so it cannot be taken away by people. May the Lord's face shine upon you. Did you know that the enemy has no hold over people who know their father loves them? If Adam and Eve had believed in God's love for them, the devil would not have been successful in tempting them. Unfortunately, they chose to believe the lie that the serpent had planted by portraying God as stingy and selfish as if he was withholding something good from them. That's why I want you to be anchored in the Father's love. You will be unshakable. You will have no desire to touch certain things, go to certain places, or be associated with certain people. 
You will keep away from negative influences because you trust your father's heart for you and believe that he only wants what's best for you. You rest, knowing that he is watching out for you to protect you and insulate you from harm. Type. This too shall pass. To affirm. God has already chosen you. You can show up as authentically as you've been created to be. Whether it be in marriage, on your job, on social media or in your friend groups. You do not have to perform. Most people perform to be chosen or approved but you have already been chosen and you've already been approved by your father. Decide today that you will no longer perform for people but only live authentically for God. The thoughts we allow ourselves to dwell on will set the direction for our lives. This is why I often say, where the mind goes, the man follows. If we have a negative mind, we will have a negative life. On the other hand, if we renew our mind according to God's word, we will experience the good and acceptable and perfect will of God for our lives. Our struggles and our triumphs are rooted in thinking patterns. Negative thoughts produce discouragement, doubt, and fear, but we don't have to live captive to those thoughts. We can choose to line our thoughts up with the Word of God. The mind is a battlefield. Ask God to give you the strength to help you start winning the battle today. Decide to resist negative thinking and dwell on positive, faith-filled, godly thoughts for your life instead. Type 888 to receive it. Many kinds of stress can be greatly relieved just by getting up and MOVING. Even the simplest of exercises, such as walking or gardening or house cleaning, can get rid of tension in our bodies and release endorphins that make us feel better. So a little exercise can go a long way. However, there's one kind of stress that won't be relieved by any amount of work or exercise. It's the stress felt by those who labor and are heavy laden. As Jesus says, this is the stress of never being good enough. This is the distress of our souls, which long to please God but cannot because of our sin. It's the longing of our souls to be found acceptable in His sight. It's the stress of guilty, heavy hearts. No amount of work can relieve it because even our best work is still wrought with sin and selfishness. Jesus invites us to relieve this stress, not at a gym or on a treadmill, but in Him. He has done all the work. He has carried the heavy yoke of our sin to the cross. In Jesus, God is pleased with us and He accepts us as His own children. Through the forgiveness of our sins and the Word of God, our heavy, guilty hearts are replaced with the gentle and lowly heart of Jesus. Jesus is rest for our stressed out souls. Type, I claim it, if you receive this declaration. The list is really endless. There is nothing in creation that you can't try to turn into your personal Messiah, but it never, ever works. The creation can never, ever give you what the Creator alone can. It makes no sense at all to desperately look for what you have already been given by your Savior. All the good and glorious created things that God puts in our lives are things He has designed and placed there to point us to the only place where life can ever be found in Him. 
All created things are signs that point us to what can be found in him. You know how this works from driving around or from taking a trip. A sign points you to a thing, but the sign is not the thing. Creation points us to the Creator, but it can never give us what the Creator can give. All the good situations, locations, possessions, relationships, achievements, and natural beauties of this physical world are wonderful blessings from the hand of God, but they have no ability to give you the one thing that your heart desperately desires life. Jesus said it this way, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. With these words, he ends our need to search. He is life, so there is no need to look for it anywhere else. Tide payment, if you agree. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Sometimes I think we take on this false responsibility of feeling like we have to be consistently strong. We can even begin to think that weaknesses are a lack of faith. But the truth is, God's power is made perfect in our weaknesses. We don't have to be ashamed of our shortcomings or upset that we can't always keep it together. Instead, we can rejoice over the fact that God offers us the gift of relying on His strength and not our own. Truly, the sooner we realize we can't do it alone, the better off we will be because we'll rely on Him alone. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. We can sometimes get so comfortable with our misery that we believe there will never be something better. But I want to break that chain in your life today. I want you to get so uncomfortable with your pain struggle and misery that you begin pleading with God for change. You see, if we get comfortable in our misery, then we stop wanting to change for the better. Yet God does the most with a willing heart. So get uncomfortable. Speak healing and wholeness over yourself and separate yourself from others who will be your company in the misery. Surround yourself with people who expect more from you and ask God to change your heart. This is the beginning of a new path for your life, a life full of goodness and success. Type, I'm abundant. To claim. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You might be feeling shut in by your circumstances today, but I believe God is setting you up. You might feel trapped, without a way out. But you can believe the truth that God is with you and He's going to see you through. God has a plan. It's for your good and He is going to get you through everything you could ever go through. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for He is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love and he relents from sending calamity. For some of us, a relationship with God feels too far gone. We think we've messed up too much, or we've strayed for too long. But if you are feeling this way today, then you need to know that God doesn't operate on expiration dates. 
In fact, he doesn't even believe in them. It's not too late to ask God to come and be an intimate part of your life. Whether you are 8 or 88 years old, you have the opportunity right now to let the Holy Spirit begin something radical in you. Even now, He is waiting for you with open arms. Go to Him today. Type, I believe in myself. To affirm, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Our life adventure is not about arriving, it's always about taking off. And like any adventure, there are always new experiences to negotiate, seasons to endure, twists and turns to navigate. When tough times come, we need to know instinctively how to brace ourselves and get into position to weather whatever comes our way. For instance, while the majority of flights I have been on are uneventful, I've been on a few when the air turbulence has been the worst imaginable. In those moments, all I can do is tighten my seatbelt and hang on for dear life. My decision then is to pray and simply trust that the pilot knows what he is doing. Similarly, when it comes to this faith adventure we are on, we must remember that the chief pilot has everything under control. Even in the midst of what may seem like the toughest storm, if we will simply trust him and listen for his instruction, we'll undoubtedly hear him whisper to our hearts. Right now everything seems impossible, but I am surrounding you, ahead of you and behind you. Nothing is impossible. Angels are spiritual beings that are often depicted as messengers and guardians of humanity. They are known to possess immense power and wisdom, and are believed to guide and protect us in times of need. However, the angels are now saying that our time of crisis is quickly approaching, and we only have two days left to prepare. This message may come as a shock to many, but the angels are urging us to take it seriously. They are warning us that if we do not heed their words, they will not be able to help us. This is a strong and urgent message that should not be taken lightly. As we go about our busy lives, it is easy to get caught up in the mundane tasks and forget about the bigger picture. However, the angels are reminding us that there is a greater purpose to our existence, and that we must be prepared for the challenges that lie ahead. The two days that are left for our time of crisis may seem like a short period, but it is enough time for us to reflect and make necessary changes. The angels are not asking for extravagant or drastic measures, but rather for us to focus on what truly matters. They are asking us to let go of our worries and fears, and to trust in their guidance. It is important to note that the angels will never abandon us, but they can only help us if we allow them to. They are here to guide us but they will never force their help upon us. Take care of yourself. Type yes if you're ready. And share this video with five people who trust God. Comment. Jesus is Lord. To support our channel, please subscribe our channel and turn on bell notification.